This lens is not perfect, but it's a very good value for money and uh, you can't go much wrong with that kind of a price. Huh? Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video I have a lens, a lens that might be the best manual focus lens that you can buy, at least the best value uh, for your first manual focus lens. This is the TT Artisan 23mm f1.4 and it's available for pretty much every APS-C camera, mirrorless camera. I have the Fuji X version mounted on the X-T3 camera body. This camera body is not mine. This is on loan from my very good friend Azul. And I'll put the link for his Instagram feed down below. Please take a look. He has some amazing pictures from Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. But now let's take a look at this lens and uh, why I think it might be the best uh, value for your first manual focus lens. But first a disclaimer, TT Artisan sent me this lens for this review and I get to keep the lens, I don't have to return it after this review. However, everything I'm going to say in this video is my own opinion and uh, I accepted this lens only because I thought it's an interesting lens and uh, not because I get a free lens. I don't do that kind of stuff. I only accept products that I think are interesting to my audience. First of all, the build quality of this lens feels absolutely fantastic, especially when you think about the very affordable price. The construction is all metal except for the glass elements, of course. Everything feels nice and tight. The focus ring is smooth and well damped. The aperture ring clicks nicely and the mount is metal and uh, it feels like a, almost like a premium lens. I say almost because there are some things that uh, make this uh, less premium, but still it is a very affordable lens. This weighs in about uh, 225 grams and the filter size is very small, 43 millimeters. And I think this version with the chromed uh, or polished, uh, what do you call this, uh, focus ring. It looks really nice on this uh, silver colored Fuji X-T3. Very nice looking handsome package here. I already mentioned the focus ring is smooth and well damped. However, the focus throw is a little bit short. It's uh, something like 100 degrees or so. It's a little bit sometimes difficult to get the focus right because even the tiniest uh, movement on the ring moves the focus a little bit too much. I'd prefer a little bit longer focus throw, maybe 180 degrees or something like that. It's not a big deal, but um, it would make the lens uh, a bit more, a lot more uh, convenient or comfortable to use. The aperture ring has a half a stop clicks up until aperture number four and after that only uh, one stop clicks and this is also a little bit funny. I think it's easier to uh, execute the mechanism when you do it like this but of course all premium lenses have even steps between the the numbers on the uh, on the scale and on the ap aperture ring. The ring is also very narrow and it's at the front of the lens instead of towards the mount of the lens like it is on every Fuji lens. However, I found that the ring was uh, easy to operate and I had no problems with that. The minimum focusing distance is 0.2 meters and that is very convenient. It allows you to take some nice and tight close-ups, but of course this is not a macro lens by any means. One downside with an all manual, all mechanical lens like this is that there is no electronic communication between the lens and the camera whatsoever. So you will not see any uh, lens related EXIF data in your image files. So if you later would like to know what was the lens that I used or what was my aperture value, you can't see those unless you figure out another way to record those while you are taking the pictures. Then about the sharpness. Is this lens any sharp? Because we all want the sharpest possible lens. First of all, I think if you buy a lens in this price range, you can't expect it to be as uh, optically good as some of the 
10 times more expensive lenses. However, this lens is quite sharp, even wide open. The only problem is that the plane of focus is heavily curved. As you can see in this picture, the big leaves are quite close to the camera and the body field is a little bit further away behind the leaves. And the background is nice and blurry in the middle of the picture, but uh, towards the lower corners and edges, you can see that the body field is quite sharp. So the focus plane is heavily curved and that leads to soft corners in most cases. But it's not because the lens would not be sharp, it's because of the curvy plane of focus. But of course the end result is the same in most cases, a little bit soft uh, extreme corners. In many cases those soft corners don't matter that much after all and especially if you shoot wide open only your main subject is in focus and everything else is meant to be blurred so in that case also those those soft corners they don't matter that much and one more time you would not buy an affordable lens like this if you absolutely need a perfect corner-to-corner -corner sharpness in your pictures. You would buy something more expensive and, uh, and a different lens altogether. The bokeh also looks quite nice and soft, at least to my eyes. The only problem is that in some cases that uh, curvy focus plane kind of spoils the bokeh because uh, the corners or the edges are sharper than the than the middle part of the bokeh or the background. But other than that, I think the bokeh looks really good for such an affordable lens. I can't see much longitudinal chromatic aberrations, also called bokeh fringing. Even some much more expensive lenses have more longitudinal chromatic aberrations than this lens. So uh, in that regard, this lens performs pretty well in my opinion. This lens also handles backlight really well considering again the affordable price point and again compared to some more expensive lenses I think this handles backlight really well and it should not be any kind of a problem. I can see a minimal amount of barrel distortions in some of my pictures but that would be easy to correct in post if I wanted to get rid of it. But in most of my pictures it was not a distraction and I only saw it when I really started to look for distortions. I have to say I really like the pictures I get with this lens. There is enough sharpness where the sharpness is needed and there is enough softness where the softness is needed or looks good. It has pleasant vintage feel to it and uh, all in all the pictures look good and that's all that matters. In my opinion this TTR Design 23mm f1.4 is a really nice lens and it's an excellent value for money. The price is only about 115 US dollars. This would also be an excellent alternative for vintage legacy lenses because those lenses always need an adapter. And it would also be very difficult to find at least to find affordable wide angle vintage lens for any crop sensor camera. Because if you are looking for uh, something equivalent vintage lens, you'd be looking at uh, a 24mm f2 or f1.4 and uh, those are not easy to find. And if you find one, it can be really expensive, much more expensive than this. And you also need that adapter for that lens. If you've never had a manual focus lens, but you'd be interested to try one, I think this TTI Design 23mm f1.4 is one of the best options as your first manual focus lens if you have an APS-C camera. It's not a perfect lens, it has its flaws, but uh, you can't go wrong with this kind of a price. It's only 115 US dollars. That's all I have to share with you in this video. Thanks so much for watching and if you found this video useful, helpful, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland. Thank you so much and I'll definitely see you in the next video.